Okay, class, we are now on to the veins. These are the veins of the head, neck, and upper extremity that you have to know. Make sure you have your pathway, your blank pathway, and your guide to arteries and veins out. Make sure you read the veins on your guide to arteries and veins. So we are going to start out with this. This is your blank pathway. This is just showing you the general flow of veins. Now remember, veins are flowing back to the heart. Get rid of that thing. They're flowing back to the right atrium. Everything is going to be dumped into the right atrium. So here we're having the arrows in this direction because everything is flowing towards the heart as opposed to um, the arteries in the systemic circulation they're flowing away from the heart so i'm just going to start with the superior vena cava so remember the superior vena cava is dumping straight into the right atrium the superior vena cava is receiving all the deoxygenated blood from above the diaphragm so I'm going to just start with these first two big blood vessels that are, well, big veins that are dumping into the superior vena cava. It's the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein. In the heart, in the heart, in the arteries, we only had a right brachiocephalic trunk. But here, basically, everything is mirrored. So the right side is the same as the left. So once you have the one side down, the other side is exactly the same. So we have the brachiocephalic veins dumping their blood into the superior vena cava. And dumping, remember brachiocephalic means arm and head. So it is receiving blood from the head and this is going to be the right and left internal jugular veins. These are actually draining all the used up blood from the brain. These jugular, internal jugular veins are going to be leaving through the jugular foramen. Remember that hole in your skull? So it, the, the right and left internal jugular brain, veins are draining into their respective brachiocephalic vein and the brachiocephalic vein is also receiving blood from the subclavian veins so the brachiocephalic veins are receiving blood from their respective subclavian veins there's also a left and right external jugular veins these external jugular veins are kind of doing what the external um, carotid arteries were doing. These are draining the outside of the skull. So all the tissue outside of the skull, the skin, the muscles, everything outside of the skull is being drained into the right subclavian vein. Now, if we start in our arm, remember everything is draining up. We are going to start with something that looks just like the arteries. We have a, a radial vein and an ulnar vein, and they are draining into the brachial vein. These are deep veins. The radial vein, ulnar vein, and brachial bra vein, and axillary vein, these are all deep veins. You really cannot see them. So radial vein, ulnar vein, dumping into the brachial vein. Brachial vein is taking its used up blood and it's taking it to the axillary vein. Just like in the arteries, but now we're going in the opposite direction. Now, in the upper extremity, in the arm, we are going to have three superficial veins that you need, you have to know and understand. The one on the lateral side that is basically starting right at the thumb on the radial side, this 
superficial vein is called the cephalic vein. And it is going all the way up on the lateral side of the arm and dumping the blood into the axillary vein. Now these superficial veins, they are superficial. They are just underneath the skin. So you can see them real easy. And then we have the basilic vein, which is draining the, the medial side of the extremity. And it's taking its used up blood to the brachial vein. Now, when we say something's draining, we just mean it is taking up the used up blood and put, taking it to somewhere else. So cephalic vein on the lateral side, basically from the thumb, and it goes all the way up to the axillary vein, the basilic vein on the medial side, going all the way up to the brachial vein. They are connected. This is right at the antecubital fossa, right at the elbow, the antecubital fossa. They are connected by the median cubital vein. Now this median cubital vein is going to be important clinically too because this is basically where you are drawing patient's blood from, this median cubital vein. So let's have a look at what these all look like. So here's the torso model. I just wanted to start with this just so you can see it. Here is the superior vena cava, right? Superior vena cava. Here is the left brachial cephalic vein, the right brachial cephalic vein. Remember, you have left and right brachial cephalic veins. Here is the internal jugular vein, internal jugular vein. They are not showing you the external jugular veins out here. External jugulars would be out here. This is the subclavian subclavian right here. So on this, this is on your, at your actual worksheet. Here is the superior vena cava. This area right here is the right brachial cephalic vein. And here is the left brachial cephalic vein. So you'll notice the right brachial cephalic vein is pretty short. Short left brachial cephalic is long. And here is the internal jugular veins. And here are the subclavian veins right here. Pretty easy, right? And here is your chart, uh, part of your worksheet also. Here are the internal jugular veins draining the brain. So taking up, taking out that deoxygenated blood and taking it back to the heart. This is the left internal jugular. This is the right internal jugular. Going into, here's the subclavian vein, and then now is this is the brachial cephalic vein. Subclavian vein, once you hit this internal jugular vein, this is now the brachial cephalic vein, superior vena cava. So let's start looking at some other veins. In any textbook, you're going to see something like this in the arm. It gets kind of messy. You have all these superficial veins. You have these deep veins. And usually deep veins, are, there's usually two of them running together. Like here's the brachial, it's two, ve two veins running together. So what I did is I drew this guy, who is a simplified version of this. And let's see if you can follow it. Now these numbers correspond to your guide to arteries and veins. So if you look at, um, it says veins draining into the superior vena cava, the radial vein, number seven, and the ulnar vein, number eight. So these are labeled in your guide, radial vein, ulnar vein, 
draining into taking the, the deoxygenated blood into the brachial vein. Brachial vein is going to become the axillary vein, and then the axillary vein will become the subclavian vein. Here is the external jugular. Here is the internal jugular. And here is the brachial cephalic on the right. Left is exactly the same. Now the superficial veins, the veins that are just underneath their skin. Here is the cephalic. Starts at your thumb, the radial side, and it's going to go all the way up the lateral part of the arm, and it's going to drain into the axillary vein. This red one, number 10, is basilic, the basilic vein. He's starting medially, and he's going up the medial part of the arm and draining into, it's usually the brachial, sometimes the axillary um, vein. And then this vein that uh, is crossing over between them, this is the median cubital vein in the antecubital fossa. So let's look at some more pictures of this. Now, this is just showing you basically the, the cephalic and basilic and median cubital. Just wanted to show you, here is cephalic coming on the thumb side, and it's going to be going into the axillary vein, dumping into the axillary vein. Basilic vein coming on the medial side, and here's the basilic vein, and it's going to be dumping a little bit lower, usually in the brachial, sometimes the axillary vein. And here is the median cubital vein. Same thing on this side. Here it's labeled for you, cephalic vein. Here's cephalic. Here, cephalic all the way up till it dumps into the axillary vein. Basilic vein starting on the medial surface, medial side, going all the way up and dumping into the brachial vein. Here is your brachial vein and here is the radial and ulnar vein. Here is your median cubital vein, which is the bridge between the cephalic and basilic. So make sure you know your three superficial veins. Here's another drawing. Thumb side. This whole thing is cephalic, the cephalic vein, going up and taking this blood and draining it into the axillary vein. Here is the basilic vein on the medial side going up and taking its blood into the brachial vein. Now, here is the median cubital vein at the antecubital fossa. Here is a, another picture. Here you are seeing the cephalic vein here, going all the way up. And then it's going to pierce and go deep so it can connect to the axillary vein, which is a deeper vein. Here is the basilic. And it's going to be go going in deep. You can see where it's going in deep. And it's going to be connecting either to the brachial or the axillary vein. And here is the median cubital vein. Real superficial vein. If, you're, if you've ever had your blood drawn, and it's right in the elbow, that antecubital fossa, that is the, the vein they stuck the needle in. So I want to show you these veins because if you are going into nursing, these veins are where you're gonna be starting IVs, where you're gonna be drawing blood. Now this, here's your thumb. So we know this is the cephalic vein. It is pretty easy to find, 
it there's no real mass of muscle or tissue here this is right up over the styloid process of the radial bone so you can usually find it we used to call this the interns vein because interns if they had to draw blood on a patient this is where they'd go this would be an easy place to get blood you can also start an IV here this is a good place to start an IV easy to find these veins on the dorsum of your hand these are all superficial veins too I'm sure if you look at your the dorsum of your hand you are going to see these veins everybody's vein pattern is different in here and you can you can start IVs and you can draw blood in here too where you do not want to put an IV would be in here you could but what's going to happen if the patient bends his or her elbow it's going to stop whatever is in that IV going in so unless you want to put this patient's arm on a board and it's like a flat board that you have to tape down so they can't move their elbow don't be putting IVs where there's going to be bends so don't put don't put an IV there so that's that's it for the veins of the head neck and upper extremity make sure you understand those and you can see this flow you can visualize this flow with your your charts and your your diagrams so next um, vein video will be on the abdominal veins and the lower extremity